Hey everyone, Fluffy Move to Lens here. Over the past 10 years, I have shared multiple travel videos online, and the question I get the most is how did you grade this? Color grading is of course very subjective and it will depend on one's taste and visual style, but in today's video, I want to share with you how I grade my travel content. I will explain the steps I take, the main tools I use, as well as the film stocks I prefer. But I will also touch on the gear that I use, my shooting settings, and what I do to get the best starting point, such as denoising. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. This video is sponsored by Film Convert. When it comes to my travel content, I have shot everything from remote landscapes like Antarctica and Iceland, cities such as New York or Paris, but also more diverse locations like Australia or the French Alps. Whilst all these places are different, my color grading process is very similar in terms of the steps that I take and the feeling I want to convey. By the way, feel free to check out my travel cinematography ebook where I go in depth about how I shoot and create my travel content. I think before I dive into actual grading, it is important to mention the cameras I use and the settings I choose. As you probably know, all of my travel work is done with Blackmagic cameras. I started with the OG Pocket back in 2013, and I continue to this day both with a 6K Pro and the later 6K full frame. There are plenty of reasons that I choose Blackmagic cameras, but the main one is image quality. There is something special about their look, and it is hard to explain, but it suits my style and the visuals that I want to create. Another big reason is Codex. Being able to shoot in ProRes or RAW is a big plus and it gives a huge advantage when it comes to color grading. The stronger the codec, the more flexibility you have. These days I shoot most of my content in B RAW 12 to 1. I feel that the size is manageable and there is plenty of data to work with. My preferred ISO of 400 and 1250 when it gets a bit dark. I also sometimes go to 2500 and 3200 in extreme low light. And I shoot most of my content at 5600K. But of course, it is also crucial to have the correct exposure and camera at the time of shooting. Since travel content is mostly done on a go, I often rely on a histogram and false color, and also make sure not to clip any highlights, so I tend to stay in the middle to be safe. When I use false color, most of the time I try to have that green hit the part of the image I want the viewer to focus on. It takes a bit of practice and it depends on a camera of course, but it usually works pretty well. I do also use drones depending on the location, as they allow me to create shots that can be unique and very useful. The one I use for my travels is a Mavic 2 Pro. When it comes to lenses, even though I love using cine and anamorphic glass for my documentaries and other type of content, I mostly use Canon zoom lenses, for the range and weight, but also because they are weather sealed and stabilized. In 90% of the time, I will use my Nisi VND because it is small and doesn't affect the colors. As always, I will link all my filmmaking travel gear in the description below. Now, there are also a few steps that I take before color grading. The first one is checking exposure, white balance, and noise. Since I shoot RAW, I sometimes modify the exposure as well as the white balance in DaVinci. When I travel, I always try to keep the same settings across the trip to save time, so the white balance might differ a bit between two locations, but I know that I will be able to make the slight adjustments in post. This is when documentary or narrative work differ from travel. Travel is personal, so I can push things a bit more the way that I really want the viewer to feel and experience the place that I visited. In other words, I am less limited by the story, and so the visuals can come first. This is why my travel content tends to be a little bit more contrasty and intense than my documentary work. The other main reason for me to use DaVinci is to denoise. Blackmagic cameras can have a noisy image, especially when you shoot in low light or when it is a large portion of blacks. I find denoising in DaVinci super easy and very powerful. My go-to settings are 5 frames, better, and I usually set the luma between 5 and 15. As you can see, it's super easy to clean and it gives a pretty good result. Recently I shared a video I filmed in Brussels and I received a lot of comments on a grading, especially on how I was able to get such clean blacks. For that video, I actually exposed for the highlights or the brightest part of the image, since I was most of the time in a very contrasty area with direct light and so the blacks were naturally much darker. And I only denoise one or two clips. Again, exposure plays a huge part in this. Also, a quick side note, I also revert my footage back to Gen 4 from Gen 5 because I find it easier to grade. This is just me though, but I thought I'd mention it. 
I also want to mention that I have a pretty simple and linear way of grading, and I'm not saying this is the way you should grade, or that is the best way. This is just how I do it. Whilst I could grade the raw files in Vinci, I actually prefer to transcode my files to ProS4 to 2 log for two reasons. The first is that I edit and grade in Final Cut Pro, and ProRes on Final Cut Pro is super fast, and this is the way that I've been grading and editing for more than 10 years. The second is that I'm represented for footage licensing by Film Supply, and I have to send all of my travel footage in ProRes 422, so it makes sense for me to work with one codec, especially since I send both graded and log files. That being said, the way that I grade and the tools and settings I use work pretty much the same regardless of the editing software you are using. Now let's get into my color grading process, but before that, here's a quick word about today's sponsor, who plays a huge part in the way that I grade, Film Convert. I have been using Film Convert for so many years now, for pretty much all of my work, from documentary to personal, and of course, also for my travel content. Film Convert enables you to add film color and grain to your videos. They have a selection of film stocks to choose from, and they've also added senior log version so you can dial in the contrast and saturation of the stocks. You have real film grain, and they also have a halation add-on. I love the look of film, and using film stocks and real grain is a great way to get that aesthetic with digital cameras, and I feel it gives something special and unique to my footage. And even though all of my travel videos are very different in terms of location, atmosphere, weather, and landscapes, they still have that same organic feel and aesthetic. All the footage you have seen in this video was graded using Film Convert, including my latest video, Frames of Brussels. For this particular video and for most of my work, I'd use the stock KD5207. Here's a quick before and after. If you're interested in Film Convert, don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 10% off, or use the code of two lines. As I mentioned before, I use Final Cut Pro with Film Convert and my process is actually quite straightforward. Before I do anything, I usually have a look in mind. What I mean is that I might want my footage to be contrasty, or moody, grainy, or warm. Of course, it depends on the location and the conditions I experience. In my case, cities are always more contrasty because of the hard light and deep shadows, for example. I often try to make cities more interesting and more unique in their looks because we are so used to them and they are not beautiful in the same way that nature can be. And with landscapes, I tend to be more neutral, as I still want my viewer to be immersed in a place. Having an idea what you're trying to achieve in terms of look is always helpful, and if you can adjust for it while you are shooting, then it makes things even easier and better once you are in post. I take most of my inspiration from movies, TV shows, as well as my own photography work. Since I have been grading my work the same way for years, I now have presets that give me a good starting point and I will usually try one or two first. For the purpose of this video though, I will apply the Film Convert look first, and then go over each of the remaining settings and tools I use within Final Cut Pro. Again, they are pretty basic, and I'm sure you could get the same results with any editing software. Final Cut Pro is not known for being the best color grading software after all. Film Convert will give me the starting look and grain, and I will take care of the rest within Final Cut. When it comes to Film Convert, you have to first select a camera pack, and personally, I use either the ones for the BMPCC 4K or the BMPCC 6K because I have been building those presets over a long time. As you can see, you can adjust the exposure, temperature, and tint, but as I said, I usually do it first within Final Cut, and I only use the extra settings in Film Convert in addition for a more intense look. Then you have to select your film stock, which is a fun part. I love to use a KD5207. This is my favorite stock, and I use it for 99% of my work. I find it gives me the film look that I want, without being too intense, and still gives me room to build my own style on top. In my case, I usually have the film color and curve anywhere between 65 and 80. 75 is most of the time my starting point. For the grain, I either pick Super 35mm or 35mm full frame, and it is usually set between 20 and 45 depending on the video, so you can just notice that it is there. Sometimes though, I do go to 50 or even more when I really want to have a grainy look, or when I have to take the digital edge of the footage, as in my opinion, it creates a more pleasing and softer image. As you can see, there are a lot of settings, but I prefer to keep things simple and do the rest in Final Cut as I just mentioned. The other setting that I regularly use is Saturation, which is often set at 120. Now let's move back to Final Cut Pro. Essentially, there are five main areas that I work with outside of the film stock. Saturation, Exposure, Curves, the Color Wheels, and Contrast. Saturation is basically to get a bit of that color back. I raise all areas, but I play around mostly with global. 50% is a good starting point. Exposure is most of the time just to lower the highlights, as I usually keep things neutral within DaVinci prior to transcoding. I often pick minus 5 to minus 8. 
Curves is where I create a lot of the initial contrast in my clips. These will often vary of course based on the footage. Most of the time I use it to lower or lift the blacks, but also to control the highlights, nothing fancy. Next we have the color wheels. I never go crazy with them, but more often than not I will add a bit of warmth in the highlights and some cooler tones in the shadows to create that color contrast. It is subtle, but it does make a difference. Then we have contrast. This is purely to add a bit of contrast and punch to the overall image, and I usually do it last. 5 to 8 usually does the job. This isn't always something that I do, but recently I've been doing it more and more, and I think it helps. And then sometimes I go also more in depth into hue and saturation per color. This is mostly to remove or lower the amount of orange and pink for the skin tones for example, or I play around with the blues of the skies. I might also use it to accentuate sunset colors. As you can see, there isn't anything special, but once all of this is combined, it creates the look that I have in mind. I will usually pick 4 to 5 clips from different and varied scenes and work on these first and then I use them as a base for the rest of the timeline. On average it takes me 2 to 3 hours to grade the entire video. I have also done a few travel videos in black and white and I used the stock KD TRX 400. The settings were pretty much the same without of course the saturation and color wheels. I did add more contrast though as with black and white you can push things a bit further and it does work in my opinion. I am by no means a professional when it comes to color grading, but I can always get an image that I'm happy with and that fits what I had in mind. Travel video is always fun to grade and in my opinion, as you don't need to worry too much about a story or message, you can be more creative as most of the time it is more about the look. But of course, cinematography plays a huge part as well. Everyone also has different tastes, so feel free to play around and see what works best for you. That's it for me for today guys, hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, please consider subscribing and also let me know which was your favorite place to capture. Feel free to also check out my travel cinematography ebook if you want to know more about how I make my travel content. And of course, don't hesitate to have a look at Film Convert as well. Both links will be in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.